Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on obturator nerve block. Indications for obturator nerve block. For anesthesia for knee surgery in combination with proximal sciatic and femoral nerve block for complete anesthesia of the knee. However, the cutaneous innervation of the obturator nerve is very variable and unpredictable. Obturator nerve block is not recommended for incisions on the medial aspect of the thigh and knee. Blockade of the obturator nerve is not routinely done for total knee replacements. Analgesia for painful conditions of the hip and knee. Post-operative analgesia after hamstring tendon harvest for anterior crusade ligament reconstruction. For paralysis of adductor muscles of the thigh, for example to relieve spasticity associated with hemiplegia or paraplegia or due to central neurologic problems such as cerebrovascular pathology, injuries to the medulla oblongata, multiple sclerosis, and cerebral palsy. To prevent adduction of the thigh during transurethral bladder surgery. Contraindications for obturator nerve block includes patient refusal, inguinal limb adenopathy, perineal infection, hematoma at the needle insertion site, coagulopathy, pre-existing obturator neuropathy, clinically manifested by groin pain, pain of the posterior medial aspect of the thigh, and paresis of the adductor muscles of the thigh. Complications of obturator nerve block includes vascular puncture, nerve damage. If the needle is advanced, too far cephalate, it may penetrate the pelvic cavity and damage organs such as the bladder, rectum, and spermatic cord. Falls from weakness of thigh adductor muscles. Patients must be warned that ambulation may be impaired. Anatomy of the obturator nerve. The obturator nerve originates from anterior primary rami of L2 to L4. Course. The obturator nerve forms within the body of the psoas. At the level of the pelvic brim, it pierces the medial border of the psoas major, being medial and posterior at the pelvis until it crosses at the level of the sacroiliac joint at L5. It is posterior to the common iliac artery and vein, lateral to the internal iliac vessels, and anterior or lateral to the ureter. It causes inferiorly on the obturator internus, close to the wall of the bladder and anterior superior to the obturator vessels. In its intrapelvic course, the obturator nerve supplies the parietal peritoneum on the lateral pelvic wall, the obturator externus, and the hip joint. The obturator nerve is separated from the femoral nerve by the iliac psoas muscle and the iliac fascia. It passes through the upper part of the obturator foramen into the thigh and gives off a branch to the hip joint. In the thigh, the obturator nerve separates into its anterior and posterior branches 2.5 to 3.5 cm after leaving the obturator foramen, which are separated initially by fibers of the obturator externus and then by the adductor brevis. Divisions The anterior branch The anterior branch exits from the obturator canal to enter the medial compartment of the thigh. It descends in the thigh behind the pectineus and adductor longus and anterior to the adductor brevis. The anterior branch communicates with the medial cutaneous nerve of the thigh and saphenous nerve to form the subsartorial plexus at the lower border of the adductor brevis. The subsartorial plexus supplies the skin on the medial side of the thigh. This branch terminates on the femoral artery which it supplies. Accessory obturator nerve, if present, usually connects with the anterior branch. The anterior branch has a highly variable connection with the cutaneous nerves of the femoral nerve. Motor supply includes the adductor longus, adductor brevis, gracilis, and occasionally the pectineus. Sensory supply is variable. The anterior medial aspect of the hip joint, skin of the posterior medial aspect of the inferior third of the thigh, and femoral artery. Posterior branch. The posterior branch descends through the thigh between the adductor brevis and the adductor magnus. It passes through the adductor hiatus to enter the popliteal fossa. Motor supply includes the adductor magnus, obturator externus, and adductor brevis occasionally. Sensory supply is variable. The posterior branch supplies the knee joint. The articular branch either pierces the adductor magnus or passes with the femoral artery into the popliteal fossa where it pierces the oblique popliteal ligament to supply the posterior aspect 
of the articular capsule. The popliteal artery is also supplied by the posterior branch of the obturator nerve. Accessory obturator nerve can be present in 8-30% to of patients. It is a small nerve arising from the ventral rami of L3 to L4. It descends on the medial border of the psoas and passes into the thigh in front of the superior pubic rami, not through the obturator foramen, and on to the posterior surface of the pectineus. Branches includes one that supplies the pectineus, one that supplies the hip joint, and one that communicates with the anterior branch of the obturator nerve. Distribution of anesthesia These diagrams show the expected distribution of the obturator nerve, sensory and motor blockade. Due to the great variability in cutaneous innervation to the medial thigh, weakness of thigh adductor muscle strength is the only reliable method of documenting a successful obturator nerve block. A small region of skin at the posterior medial aspect of the knee is commonly regarded as having exclusive obturator nerve supply. However, a complete loss of adductor muscle strength is uncommon despite a successful obturator nerve block. This is because the femoral nerve may innervate the pectineus and the sciatic nerve may innervate the adductor magnus. The strength of the lower limb adductors relies 70% on the obturator nerve. Decrease in adductor motor strength occurs by 25% following femoral nerve block and by 11% following sciatic nerve block. Weakness of the adductor muscles of the thigh can be demonstrated by comparing the maximal pressure exerted by the patient, squeezing a sphygmal manometer that has been pre-inflated to 40 mm mercury and placed between the legs before and after the block performance. Peripheral Nerve Stimulation Technique The goal is to block the obturator nerve before it bifurcates into its anterior and posterior divisions to achieve complete obturator nerve block. The main nerve trunk of the obturator nerve needs to be identified above its bifurcation as close to its exit from the obturator canal as possible. Important landmarks include ASIS, pubic tubercle, inguinal ligament, femoral artery, adductor longus tendon, and the inguinal crease. Techniques Femoral nerve block techniques can be classified as plexus block techniques, which includes 3-in-1 block technique, iliofacial block, psoas compartment block, and parasacral sciatic block, and selective block techniques such as Labatt's classic technique, paravascular selective inguinal block, and interadductor approach. The classical technique. Patient is positioned supine with the hip abducted to 30 degrees. Mark the needle insertion point which is a point 1 cm lateral and 1 cm cordat to the pubic tubercle. General measures include preparation for monitoring, emergency drugs, IV access and equipments. Use standard aseptic measures and anesthetize the skin with 1% lidocaine. Needle of choice is a 50 to 80 mm short beveled needle. Needle insertion. Insert the needle perpendicular to the skin at the marked needle insertion point. Advance the needle until the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus is in contact, typically at 2 to 4 cm depth. Then withdraw the needle slightly and redirect it 45 degrees laterally and slightly posteriorly to pass under the superior pubic ramus into the obturator foramen. Once in the obturator foramen, advance the needle until contraction of adductor muscles is seen. LA injection. Manipulate the needle until adductor muscle contraction is seen at a stimulating current of 0.3 to 0.5 mA. Stabilize the needle and inject 5 mL aliquots of LA to a total of 10 to 15 mL while aspirating regularly to exclude intravascular injection. Interadductor approach. The patient is positioned supine with the hip abducted and knee flexed. Identify the tendon of the adductor longus which lies medial to the femoral artery. General measures as described above, needle of choice is a 50 to 80 mm short beveled insulated needle. Needle insertion. At the level of the inguinal crease, insert the nerve block needle posterior to the adductor longus tendon. Direct the needle laterally and cranially, aiming towards the ASIS with a slight posterior inclination. Advance the needle into the obturator foramen. Once in the obturator foramen, Advance the needle until contraction of adductor muscles is seen. LA injection. 
manipulate the needle until adductor muscle contraction is seen at a stimulating current of 0.3 to 0.5 mA, place a hand on the adductor muscles to distinguish direct muscle stimulation from a true adductor motor response. Stabilize the needle and inject 5 mL aliquots of LA to a total of 10 to 15 mL while aspirating regularly to exclude intravascular injection. Choice of LA 10 mL of LA is adequate for selective obturator nerve blocks. For long-lasting anesthesia or analgesia, examples include Pupivacaine 0.25 to 0.5%, Ropivacaine 0.25% and Levobupivacaine 0.25 to 0.5%. For the relief of adductor muscle spasms during transurethral surgery, short-acting LA should be used such as Mepivacaine 1 to 2% and Lidocaine 1 to 2% as the operation is of short duration. For neurolysis, solutions used include phenol, ethanol, bupivacaine, nivobupivacaine, and or steroids have been used. Ultrasound Technique Localization of the anterior and posterior branches of the obturator nerve is difficult using peripheral nerve stimulation and ultrasound. This is because there are only a few accompanying structures that run with these nerves to aid identification. Being small, flattened nerves lying in facile planes between muscles, visualization of the individual nerves by ultrasound is difficult. However, the facile planes are easily identified, and ultrasound-guided obturator nerve block is simpler to perform and more reliable than surface landmark techniques. Ultrasound settings. Use a high-frequency linear probe or curvy linear broadband probe in obese patients. Set at a depth of 4 to 8 cm. Orientation is transverse. Needle length of choice is 80 to 100 mm. The patient is positioned supine with the hip abducted 30 degrees and laterally rotated. Ultrasound probe is placed parallel to the inguinal ligament in the inguinal crease. Identify the femoral artery, which is a pulsatile and echoic structure, the femoral vein, which is non pulsatile and compressible and echoic structure, pectineous muscle, anterior to the adductor muscles. The adductor muscle seen as the probe is moved medially from superficial to deep, adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus. The anterior branch of the obturator nerve is a hyperechoic structure that moves more medially as the thigh is scanned distally. It passes beneath the medial part of the pectineus. It then lies in a facial plane between the adductor longus superficially and the adductor brevis posteriorly. An artery often accompanies this branch Use color Doppler to help confirm its presence. The main trunk of the obturator nerve prior to its bifurcation can be identified by following the anterior obturator nerve proximally. Visualization of the main trunk is often facilitated by turning the probe through 90 degrees to scan the nerve longitudinally. The posterior branch of the obturator nerve lies in the facial plane between the adductor brevis and magnus. It is often not clearly seen. A useful mnemonic to remember the order of the adductor muscles of the thigh from anterior to posterior is Alabama, adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus. Technique General measures include preparation for monitoring emergency drugs, IV access, and equipment. Use standard aseptic measures and anesthetize the skin with 1% lidocaine. Approach The in-plane approach is recommended with the needle approaching from the anterior side of the probe, ensure that the needle trajectory does not puncture femoral vessels. If the nerves are poorly visualized, inject LA within the facial planes between the adductor longus and adductor brevis and between the adductor brevis and adductor magnus. LA injection. After negative aspiration for blood, inject 5 mL of LA around each nerve or within the facial plane as mentioned. If the nerve is not seen, Inject up to 10 mL of LA in the triangle between the sartorius and the tensor fascia lata muscles. Useful tips. If possible, it is best to be able to visualize and block the main trunk of the obturator nerve prior to its bifurcation. The articular branches of the posterior obturator nerve may be blocked by a high volume saphenous nerve block in the lower part of the adductor canal. The branches of the obturator nerve may be visualized with ultrasound imaging and block after eliciting a motor response. However, trying to visualize the individual nerves is difficult and interfacial plane blocks are easier and just as effective. These are my references. 
Thank you.